very end of the service today, um, Cap and I will be doing something special. And, uh, <laughs> one more training for the road. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, we'll be doing something uh, special. All the kids, you just kind of hang in there. There's a, by the way, in the bulletin, there's an empty page. So if you want to write some things down, you want to draw pictures, uh, you want to, uh, you know, uh, some of the pictures. Well, I'd have to find that guy in a dark alley. <laughs> some, of, some of the pictures uh, that I got from you all the other day were just amazing. They were just amazing. The kids drew a, a number of them. Had Sarah had them get together uh, to do that. And uh, I love them. They're, they're over at the house. And, and uh, <laughs> Ben doesn't know it, but when he gets a chance to move in, we're just going to have them all over the walls and stuff. Like that. <laughs> As ham sandwiches go, transition. Alright? It was perfection. You figure you got a thick slab of, of country ham, a fresh bun, crisp lettuce, plenty, plenty of expensive white brown gourmet mustard, and all of a sudden your jaws just start aching. You can't wait because of all this anticipation. I carried it to the picnic table in our backyard. I picked it up with both hands but was stopped by my wife suddenly at my side. Where she says, uh, hold on, Johnny, our six-week-old son, while, while I get my sandwich. I had him balanced between my left elbow and shoulder. I was reaching again for the ham sandwich, but I noticed a streak of mustard on my fingers. I love mustard. I had no napkins, so I licked it off. It was not mustard. No man ever put a baby down faster than I did. It was the first and only time I sprinted all around the backyard with my tongue hanging out. For the worst cloth of each hand, I did what they used to do when they shined shoes. You know, just going back and forth trying to get rid of it. Only I did that on my tongue. Later on, my wife walked up and said, Now you know, honey, why they call that mustard poupon. <laughs> Last joke, you know, you got that one. It's been said that the only person who really likes change is a baby with dirty diapers. But, but change means a transition. A transition that is taking place. Where, where you witness the end of one thing and then you begin to see the beginning of another. We've all experienced that chapter in our lives. We've all experienced where this is over and now we move on to do something else. Something that uh, we're led to do. Something that you feel is very important. And sometimes we know what to expect, and other times we're unsure. We don't know what the future's going to hold. We just step out and believe that God is in control. But one of the promises that we have from God, and I've been going over this a lot this last week, just this phrase, is that God will always be with us. Would you say that loud with me? God will always be with us. Always. Therefore, no matter what the transition, we still have access to the same God as we did before the transition took place. And we, we have this God that we all need and He is there with us and will walk with us. And everything else is just icing on the cake of life. Yeah. As long as we know the Lord is there. As long as we know that we're walking with Him. We serve an amazing God and He has big plans for all people. It is God's will that every person born gets a chance to hear about Jesus and the tremendous love that he has for them. It's God's will for everyone to know the joy of being saved from their sins so that they can stand in the presence of the Lord after they die and they hear, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. And even though these things are God's will, even though we know that's what he desires, we also understand that we have a will. And sometimes we don't do the things that God wants us to do. So it's not always going to happen for us. There will be people who reject the opportunity to hear about Jesus. Some will not be interested in the love that he has for them because other things at least look better for now. And so I'd rather do that. A relationship with God may not happen because some believe our sins don't matter. We, we hear people say all the time now, well, you know, there's no heaven, there's no hell, so what's the difference? You live, you enjoy your life, you die, and it's over. That's not what God's Word says. Some will believe that we are good enough on our own to answer for our own sins, that we will become our own Savior. I don't think that's going to happen here. Not with the lives that we have lived. But the amazing thing about God is that regardless of what it is that we believe, God still pursues us. And the only thing I can think of, you know, 
that his love was like a beagle dog that's chasing after a rabbit. Just doesn't stop. Just keeps going. And God sees value in the soul of each and every human being. That's why God chose to build the church. That's what the church is supposed to be about. And we the people have been given the honor and the privilege to let others know about the love of God. That's why we come to worship. That's why we care about all the people that are around us. That's why we love on each other. Because of what Jesus has done in our lives. God's vision includes those who have come before us and the generations that are still waiting to be born. Each of us is called to serve God in our own generation. It was over a decade ago when I received a phone call from Jim Jessup, a little extra call from Roger Gibson. And he began to talk to me about if I would be interested in coming out to speak at a place called Fairview Community Christian Church. He said, there's some people out there in Rio Oso that need some hope. And I said, Rio Oso? <laughs> Where in the heck is that? Well, on paper, it looked like an easy decision to say no to. Kath and I felt that God was saying, this is where you need to be. This is our assignment for this time in your life. We had no idea what a tremendous jewel God had hidden inside of this congregation. Nor could we foresee the diamonds that would be added to it by the new members who were yet to come in the life of this church. We could not have imagined the ministry this congregation would do because of the people consistently saying, yes, if that's what God is calling us to do, then let's just do it. Let's do it. The love of Jesus Christ was our rallying cry. And we've reached levels of loving others, of giving to others, of serving others, of spreading the gospel that hadn't been done for a long time here at this church. God chose this church for the mission for this part of the county. Our purpose is to love others. Our purpose is to teach the Word of God. Our purpose is to reach this world that we live in for Christ. And that purpose does not change simply because there's a change in the pastoral leadership. Change happens. It just does. But let me say this very loud and very clearly to you. It has been an honor for Kath and myself to minister to each one of you. You brought great joy. Now with all that in mind, I want to take you back to uh, a fellow you're familiar with by the name of Moses. But another individual that came along with him, and his name is Joshua. Moses was appointed to, by God to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of slavery into the Promised Land. Joshua was Moses' aide, by hand man if you will. And Moses was able to lead the people to the border of the promised land, and he got to see where God was going to take his people. But, but it was under Joshua's leadership that the people received what God had for them. Joshua has led them to the promised land. I, I believe Christ is calling Fairview to plant new seeds in this area, and he's been doing this for quite a while now. And it's time to bring in the harvest under new leadership. Well, this harvest is going to come to need for more workers to enter into the field. Remember, the purpose of pastors is to equip the saints for the working of the ministry. And so if there's anybody in this room that is thinking, what are we going to do without Pastor Mike? You're asking the wrong question. It should be asking, how has Pastor Mike equipped me? How has Kathy and him given me some kind of an example that I might be able to follow? The things that I've seen him do, now we can do. What do I need to step up to do in order to keep this church marching forward? Even though God has placed Kathy and he in another situation, God, what do you want from me as far as this community is concerned? This area we live in is in the process of change. When we first got here, it was kind of interesting. Most of the individuals that seemed when we first got here were farmers. Okay? So raise your hand if, if you were a farmer. Go ahead and raise your hand. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not emotionally, Dave, just physically. <laughs> How many of you are not farmers? Let's see your hands. It's changed. It's changed quite a bit. Now we have new housing that is being added. For instance, in the Plumas Lake area, 
they are bringing in hundreds and hundreds of people. The challenge before us is to reach those people for Christ. And perhaps the next promised land is Plumas Lake. To reach them for Christ. See, God reminded Joshua that Moses was gone. But the removal of Moses did not squash the promises of God. And so I get to your new interim pastor, Mark, and you're going to be meeting him in about a month. He will be here. And also our associate pastor, Ben, who you've met already. And the board, the same words that God gave to Joshua, where he, they said, be strong and very courageous, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful in wherever you go. I challenge you to go to these places. I challenge you to get out of your home and go over to Plumas Lake and to march. Not in protest, but to march with great joy that this is what God has placed right in front of us. And we want to reach you for Christ. And you walk around, maybe just as, jo you know, just as Joshua did, and, and the walls came coming down, right? But they won't be coming, come, coming down like that. Let's ask for God to take the barriers down so that you can walk in and touch the lives of these individuals. You claim these new neighbors for Jesus. You do the best to love them into the kingdom of God. And you do that by the things that you say and the way that you love and the service that you give. You care about them. God has a purpose for Fairview that's far greater than one or two leaders. This church has stood as a faithful witness for God on this corner for about 140 years. And that tells me that God has plans to use a number of pastors over the years to bring to completion the work that God intended for Fairview to accomplish. We love and we appreciate the people and the leaders who have brought this church to this particular time. But God has never been without a plan. Never been without a plan for the church. God's plan for Fairview now is to expand as a congregation under the leadership of Pastor Mark, under the leadership of Ben and Sarah, and all of the leaders to reach out and to touch the rest of this community with the message of Jesus. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you as a congregation for giving Kath and I some of the greatest years of our lives in ministry. We didn't think it was possible. I mean, we had served in one place for like 20 plus years, and it was a great joy to be there. But when we got here, we thought, well, Lord, we'll just see. And my goodness, it's been a great ride. It's been wonderful. We had no idea what pastoring would mean, that we would gain so much in so little time. We had no idea of how many of you would see us as a, as a dad or a mom or as a brother or a sister or just as a friend. We had no idea how many friends we would be inheriting to the re responding of the call of Christ and, and then go on to serve here in Fairview. It's been an incredible journey. I don't say this lightly, and I hope you'll take it right. I, I believe you were some of the finest people on the planet. And I, I don't know, I started loving farmers. <laughs> But I love you because of the great community that you are. Your love and your presence in our lives has made us far richer than all these stuffy, self-centered billionaires around the planet. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of some of the most intimate as well as some of the most painful moments in your lives where we hug each other shed tears and encouraged each other. We hope that you learn from us that you don't have to be perfect or have a perfect family to be a witness for God or to be loved by God. So thank you for all the joys and all the celebrations that we shared together. We've been through a number of graduations, promotions, marriages, funerals, retirements, baptisms, Vacation Bible School, football games, birthday parties, wild game nights, and some of the greatest watermelon spitting in the world. 
Thank you for the love and support you showed us during our times of grief. Because I don't know if you realize this or not, but over the last decade, Kath and I lost both of our parents. Her brother, my sister. And you came by our side, and as great Christians, you supported us. What a blessing. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Some people have asked me, they said, well, uh, how do you do your offering here? And I said, well, actually, since COVID hit, we haven't passed a plate since. Well, how's it doing? Really well. Because of you. The way you have given. I, I talk about a special offering, and the next thing I know, there's thousands of dollars that has been put into a, a, you know, a plate somewhere where you're saying, hey, we want to support what's going on. We want to help. Thank you for all the cooking of food that has been allowed to keep me the, the stuff figure that I have. <laughs> Hot books are the best, you know, right? Yeah. Thank you for all the studies. All the meeting times that we shared together as we tried to study the Word of God. Or as we sat down with leadership and we tried to plan what was going to happen in the future. Where God was going to lead us. Thank you for taking risk. By taking on new responsibilities in the church. And we've discovered over the years something wonderful. There's many of you that have been truly gifted with, with great gifts that God has given to you. And you've been able to apply those into the church. And that is such a blessing. Thank you for all the music. The praise and the worship. The songs that we've sung to the glory of God. Thank you for all of you who have served in the ministry of helps. Because I know you don't get thanked very often. But you are the individuals who have been the ushers and the cooks and the cleaners. The greeters, the children's volunteer teachers, the nursery workers, and on it goes. Thank you for sharing us with the body of Christ at large. When I first got here, one of the things that was really important to me was to be able to continue to reach out to other pastors that are in trouble. And this church gave me the opportunity to do that. Do this love on them, yeah. encourage them, help to give them some direction. And you've allowed me to do that in California and Oregon and Washington, all the way to the Dakotas, the Midwest. I mean, I've touched a lot of people because of your allowing us to have that kind of a footprint. And I'm grateful. Thank you for the many years you stood by our side. Some of you have been with us from the first day that we walked into the building. Some of you have joined us along the way. And you were proud of us. But we were every bit as proud of you. Some of the greatest honors that we received was listening as we were being introduced. And so you would stand there and I didn't know how the people were going to take it, but you would say, oh, this is my pastor, this is his wife. You said it with such conviction and such joy. And you so faithfully came to church and truly expected to hear something special from God. And I hope that is what has happened. You've been outstanding among congregations. And I will never forget you. There have been times I wish I could have served you more effectively. I asked your forgiveness when I was too busy to notice you wanted to talk. I ask your forgiveness for forgetting to return a phone call or not getting to you as soon as you thought that I should have. I ask your forgiveness for leaving your name out of a bulletin or not giving you credit along with others. I ask your forgiveness for when I may have given you a wrong impression of Jesus or what the scriptures have, to, have been taught. I ask your forgiveness when I may have been so passionate about an incident and an issue that I became harsh, insensitive, unkind, told you once again to get up off your butts. I did a lot, didn't I? I asked your forgiveness for any way in which you felt I failed you as a pastor. It was not my intention to hurt you. It was my intention to love you. And I've always tried to let you know that even though I was your pastor, I am still a sinner saved by grace. And God's still working on me. And one of these days, he'll get it straightened out. 
I want to thank you for all the prayers that you've sent up on our behalf during the course of our ministry. It's an honor to have a congregation who is praying that God will keep you each day that you wake up and use you in ways that will help to change the world that you live in. And I hope that after you pray for Mark and Ben and their families, you'll still take a moment and remember to pray for us. I'm not completely sure what God has next in store for us, but I know that we are not strong enough to be dropped from your prayer list. Not for a long time. I'm going to be praying for you. And by the way, we closed out on the 28th of June. We closed out our 100 days of prayer. And God answered. And he brought us an individual that will probably be with us for the next year anyway. As well as Ben and his family. We don't know how long they're going to be here. How long they can put up with us. But God answered the prayers. The prayers of his people. So as we close this decade of ministry, my prayer for you comes straight from the Word of God. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you might be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and the praise of God. And as the Apostle Paul said to the Philippian church, I'm confident of this, and he who began a good work in you shall be faithful to complete it. Finally, our goal was to be grateful for the past, excited about the present, and looking forward to the future. And I hope that's been accomplished. I hope it's been accomplished. Ben's going to be leading you in communion in just a minute, but I, I wanted to end this morning with a little history. When I was a lot younger, I had a lot of dreams, a lot of things that I wanted to accomplish. At the time, I didn't know why, but every one of those things seemed to fail. I understand now. But back then, I didn't understand at all. I, I wanted to be a baseball player for a while. I had an opportunity to sign with the St. Louis Cardinals and Detroit Tigers. And through no fault of them, but through my own dumb mistakes, I let that go by, and so it was a bit of a failure. I remember being asked to be the president of a recording company. We had the money, we had the band, we had everything. And then I became a Christian, and they refused to allow me to do that, to be a part of what they were doing. It was another big dream that failed. And there's been so many others. So many things that I just dreamt and had hopes for my future, and they didn't happen. At least not like I thought. And all those seemingly failures were rather painful. So I leave you with the only thing that I really know how to do, and that is to sing. If there ever were dreams that were lofty and noble, they were my dreams at the start. But the hopes for life's best were the hopes that I harbored down deep in my heart. When my dreams turned to ashes, my castles all crumbled, my fortune turned to loss. But I wrapped it all in the rags of my life and laid it at the cross and he made it. Something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and pride. And he made something beautiful. A cross. He made something beautiful. Because of your eyes. We'll be outside.
Yes, we are uh, now going to enter into a time of communion. So if you do not have the elements, just raise your hand and uh, later we'll, we'll bring you some. Uh, Mike has been talking about change. Change is happening all the time. And it has been happening at Fairview for over a hundred years. Pastors come and go, congregations change. Things become different. And that can be quite hard at times. But there's one thing that's always constant. And that is the Lord Jesus. And what He has done for us. And what is communion about? It's about remembering Him. And as Pastor Mike was speaking, I couldn't just help and smile and thinking about all the things that Jesus did through Mike and through this church and through this congregation. And that's not going to change. Even though Mike may be going on to a new season of life, Jesus is still going to work. Miracles are still going to happen. People are still going to be saved. And that's what this is about. This is why we are here. This was Mike's mission, and his time here, and his mission will continue into whatever he does next. But let us keep our hope and our eyes fixed upon Christ. So now as we take communion, we remember his body that was broken for us. So let us take and eat of the bread. And we remember the blood that was spilled. The blood that was spilled for the community that we are in. There are people out there still. People in Plumas Lake that still need to hear about the blood that was spilled for them. So as we take of this blood, let us remember that. And let us look to the future of all of those who are still yet to call upon the name of Jesus. But we will reach them by God's grace. Let us drink of his blood. Heavenly Father, we just want to close this time to thank you for all that you have done through this church, through Mike and all who have come before, remembering your good deeds, your good works that you have allowed us to participate in. We thank you for that. We praise you for that. And we pray over Mike and his family that you would bless them as they go, that you would encourage them and strengthen them and help them through this time. We just pray for your favor and blessing upon their family and upon this church, Lord. That your work, that your gospel will continue to advance and be proclaimed throughout all of this community. So we lay it at your feet, Lord. And we ask and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.